this prediction that's right up here. Or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. <laughs> Obviously, today we've talked about Henrik Lundqvist, and um, we're talking about another guy who meant something to New York City, not just to an organization. And last night, the New York Mets paid tribute to Rod Gilbert, putting up his picture and having a moment of silence before the game. Obviously, this would happen at a Ranger game if he was, uh, if there was a Ranger game that was on right now. But Rod Gilbert was so much more than just a hockey player. He was a guy that came in, embraced everything about New York City that you possibly ever could. For starters, it was a career that almost never happened. He uh, fell on, I think they said it was a beer cap or something that was on the ice, fell, collided with the boards, and shattered his leg. And um, they, I think he had ended up having surgery for that, ended up going, going back, working his way through an injury, playing through junior hockey under um, Emil Francis, his future coach, as well as playing with his childhood friend, John Rattel. And again, he, he just worked his way back and he was a force in the Rangers first playoff series. Uh, the first games he was playing with the uh, with the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, against how Toronto Maple Leafs, you know what I mean. Um, then Gilbert had success, and then had another trial in the hospital. We'll, we'll say it like that, where according to him, he could actually um, feel an outer body experience that he's dying on the table, and Emil Francis is saying. You come on, you come on. I need him. He's my best player. <laughs> I need him. I need him back. But and and eventually, you know, Rod stayed with us. We had the pleasure of having him for many, many, many more years. He was absolute grace on the ice. Uh, just so fluid, reading the game. Do um, you ever look at the pictures of? of him on the ice. There was almost never a hair out of place when it was as short as mine. When it was nice and long, it was even, it was just even more picturesque to watch him skate around. I mean, Rod Gilbert came from Montreal. He was a kid from Montreal and he embraced New York City perhaps better than any uh, athlete ever did. Here's a quick story to tell you. This is how much he's loved. Um, Gilbert said in his first game, uh, or one of his first games against Gordy Howe, he said, uh, hey, watch out for number nine. And he's thinking, I've heard all these stories about Gordy Howe. I mean, he, what does he ever have against me? He never wants, uh, I, he doesn't have any problem with me. So he goes out on the ice. The next thing you know, he's staring up at the ceiling. And he has the smelling salts under his nose. And he and uh they say, Oh, well, um, so what what happened? It goes, it was number nine. And so Gilbert said this comment. Uh, if there's anything I want to do, I want to live long enough to elbow Gordy Howe in the face uh, when he's in a retirement home. And years later, Gordy comes over, puts his arm around him. Hey, is there any bad blood between us and Gilbert's going, no, not at all, Gordy. He says, oh, because I hear you want to hit me in the retirement home. <laughs> like, well, we'll see about that later. And then all, all he wants to do is be able to give him a shot and say it was number seven that did it. Uh, Gilbert, Gilbert was cemented into New York City long after his playing days were over. There's a reason why he was the first number ever retired by the New York Rangers. There was a reason why he has this picture made for him by the famed artist Andy Warhol. Like, this guy was an infectious personality, and we're able to reflect about on that right now. And he truly is what it means to be a, a New York Ranger through and through. And um, as Henrik Lundqvist showed us in a great example, he was kept us from the past, kept us, it was our connection to the past and what always let us know that's the guy you want to emulate. That's who you want to be. 
Sort of like how the New York Mets always had Tom Seaver. Sort of like how the the New York Jets have Joe Namath. Well, Joe Namath had a couple problems, but that's but still, I mean, that's the way you always look at those guys. All right, your thoughts, boys? I mean, I, I've I've said everything I could say about this man. Um, one thing I, I just remember was just seeing him at games and just cheering on the team so hard. Like it was like he was still on the team, and it, it, it just you knew this team meant something to him. You knew the organization meant something to him. There aren't many guys like that anymore. I, I, I could I could truly say that. So. Um, I don't know what else I can really say that wouldn't be rehashing what I said earlier on, but I, 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 that's one of the things that really sticks out to me about Roger Perry. I mean, it's it's great to have players that will always let you know what it means to be in this organization, what it means to be a New York Ranger. Anthony, what would be a parallel guy that you would say for the Islanders? Is it is it Poppin? Is it Trottier? I mean, honestly, it's it's – it could be any of those guys from the dynasty years. I mean, Pot Fen, try to, I mean, Bobby Nystrom. Bobby Nystrom, for the longest time, was called Mr. Islander. You know, he scored the goal for the – they won the first cup, and he was just one of those guys. He, he did anything he asked him to do on the ice. Great in the community. Um, so, I mean, I lean towards him, but it could be any of those guys. Any of those guys that play in the dynasty teams. I mean, they, they, they fit the bill. You know, Roger Baylor is exactly that for the Rangers. You know, like I said before, you know, when you think New York Rangers of the past, you think Roger Bear, you know, Andy Bathgate, uh, Jockerman, uh, but Jill Bear is the guy. So he's definitely going to be missed. Because Jill Bear, this was his home long after his playing days were over. Yeah. He did charities everywhere, Garden of Dreams. Uh, he was, uh, he had a tweet put out from the NYPD yesterday appreciating everything that he's always done it's just it's just it's it's amazing the life yep. that somebody could always lead and it goes to show you first off by the way it goes to show you that if you get injured and you persevere you go through this like <laughs> like roger bear beat death and came back yeah. and, and played nhl hockey and was an impact on this city and uh just one more time i'm gonna break out this quote which was, um, I'm a city person. I grew up in Montreal. After traveling around the U.S. and the world, I discovered New York City was the greatest city in the whole world. And I'm very, very fortunate to have played my career there. Take notice, uh, other New York athletes. There's a reason why it's a privilege of a year. And I'm, and I'm a hometown guy by saying that. I have no problem being a homer. So what are your thoughts? What are your memories about Roger Bear? Did you ever meet Roger Bear? Uh, I mean, I, I haven't seen Mikey BX yet. So I know he's the stick boy. He must have met Roger Bear. So uh, throw that all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.